The dummy came closer. Behind it, the racks of mannequins stepping in the same direction. As the dummy advanced, it raised one arm, its hand flexed open as if preparing for a karate chop. Rose looked up in horror as the hand reached its full height and the dummy stared down at her with its terrible blank face. And then a man reached out of the darkness and took hold of her hand and said, Run. There's something inherently fascinating about a Doctor Who target book. It has this effortless ability to conjure up images in your mind, whether that's a simple recall of the televised story, or envisaging even more ambitious visuals than what we saw on screen. There's really nothing quite like them. It's a totally spellbinding way of experiencing Doctor Who. And yet, that's not always been their sole purpose. The target range started in 1973, when John Pertwee was at the height of his powers as the Doctor. After reprinting the three novelised William Hartnell adventures released in the 60s, the head of Target Books approached the current script editor of Doctor Who, Terence Dix, to ask for some more. So he came to the BBC, got a licence to novelise Doctor Who, then got shunted onto the Doctor Who office and said, you know, I must have more Doctor Who books, I need them urgently, who is going to write them? And I said, I will. And I did the first one, which is Doctor Who and the Auton Invasion. Not only were these books the perfect way to get children reading, but they provided the perfect means of documenting a televised story, which, in those days before DVDs and VHS, you could never go back and watch again. The only way to relive or experience a story you missed was to pick up a Target book. In the beginning, when I was writing far fewer, I would expand things that were in the original script, yeah. you know, or event incidents that were fecal to another incident or mm -hmm. something. So there'd be stuff in them that wasn't in the scripts. But gradually, as the pressure increased, I decided that the purpose of the book was to reproduce the show in the reader's head. See, because in those days, you didn't get any repeats. Yeah. So if you missed the show, you missed it. You were not going to get a chance to see it again. The history of Doctor Who was a great mystery to a lot of people, and a fantastic mystery if you were a child. You know, your mum and dad would talk about these old black and white adventures, stories that you couldn't remember, which then suddenly, out of the blue, started arriving on the bookshelves. The three old paperbacks from the 60s were republished, which then became a line of novelising slowly over many years every single Doctor Who televised adventure ever. At times, what we got in the books was even more exciting than what we saw on screen. The imagination knew no bounds, and the covers of the books were something that really capitalised upon this. Chris Achilios created some of the very first Target book covers, with his gorgeous stippled illustrations of the Doctor foregrounding a swirling montage of planets and stars becoming a staple image of the Target range. This style is very much echoed in Anthony Dry's covers for this new range. The covers do incredible justice to the original Achilleos artwork, right up to the images of the Doctor being made up of a series of black and white dots. However, many fans were quick to point out their grievances with said images of the Doctor being incorrect on certain covers. For instance, the picture of the Tenth Doctor on the Christmas Invasion cover in fact originates from his final adventure, The End of Time. But this is nothing new for the target range. To name but one example, the image of Hartnell that dons the cover of the Crusaders is in fact from his anniversary appearance in The Three Doctors. Personally, I was never offended by these incorrect elements and images. If anything, it simply adds to their charm. And that's something that's inherent throughout all of the target range. Charm. These novelizations have always had that quirky yet straightforward feel to them. The prose style is warm and relaxed, making the books easy to get into. That's something that can certainly be said for Russell's novelisation of Rose. The tone is so cosy and inviting that it's hard to put down. From the early descriptions of Rose's everyday life to the entrance of the Doctor, the novel is brimming with nostalgia, capturing that unique Series 1 feel. This is something that's also true for Jenny's novelisation of The Christmas Invasion. It immediately takes you back to David Tennant's first outing as the Doctor. Like the Target books of old, it conjures up the TV story in your head beat for beat, and its descriptions and imagery are simply pitch perfect. Despite conveying their televised counterparts immaculately, this doesn't simply restrain the author to what was seen on screen. There's no such boundaries to speak of. It gives this new range of releases yet another hook. Not only are you getting your favourite stories in book form, 
but you're also getting a more expanded outlook on the worlds and characters within them, much like the old Target books did. What the books do is fill out a lot of gaps, especially of the lesser characters, so that you come to realise who they are more deeply, why they're thinking in the way they are. They're given more time. You get a better depth and probably improve when you go back to watch the actual television story. You've got more insight into the characters and what's going on. The worlds we see on screen seem yet more vast. The throwaway character from Rose, Wilson the caretaker, is fleshed out and given an entire backstory, putting a whole new spin on the Doctor's comment on his demise. Characters such as Mickey, Llewellyn and Osgood are expanded upon and are allowed an insight into their inner thoughts and turmoil, thus giving us a further understanding of their motivations. However, there's one character that I don't think we should get inside the head of. The Doctor. Alas, that seems to be part of Stephen Moffat's angle with his Day of the Doctor novelisation, with some chapters coming directly from the 10th, 11th and War Doctor's perspectives. You'll find in the old books that it's very hard to get inside his head, and actually they don't. What I mean is they don't present events from the Doctor's point of view. In other words, what he's thinking. You don't go through his thought processes. It's that, you know, some people sort of say, well, it makes the Doctor a bit boring in print. I think the opposite, actually, because he remains slightly unknowable. Actually, if you're going to start dipping into his mind, saying the Doctor thought this, the Doctor thought that, actually he's thinking of 57 things at once. He's thinking of a thousand things you know nothing about that wouldn't even make sense to humans. And actually, once you get inside his head, you tend to find he could solve the plot within five minutes. Even so, Stephen's writing is so witty that it doesn't really make for a drawback here. The Day of the Doctor still makes for a cracking intelligent read, very Douglas Adams-esque at times and incredibly meta, with the first page being totally mind-boggling from the off. Whilst many were offended by some of Moffat's controversial comments about such things as the first and second Doctor's colour blindness, I personally didn't have an issue with them at all. They're tongue-in-cheek, if a little self-indulgent, but I found them so funny and to put it one way, very Moffat. It is just a joy to relive these episodes again, yet in a new light, finding out even more about the stories that we love so much and going on a brand new adventure altogether. That's perhaps one of the reasons why they're so brilliant. So... fantastic. In short, these are a must-buy for all fans. There's something for everyone and they're all brilliant in their own way. Jenny's paperback of The Christmas Invasion is a faultless retelling of the TV story, Russell's novelisation of Rose adds an even greater insight into characters and events, and Stephen's insane novel of The Day of the Doctor is an inventive, brand new take on the Target book formula. There's no doubt that these new releases have been a resounding success. Fans have already started calling for more, and I'm certainly inclined to agree with them. Whilst Russell T Davis and Paul Cornell have said that this is it for them, I'd certainly love to see other writers try their hand at the huge expanse of stories in New Who. Let's see Mark Gatiss give The Unquiet Dead a go. Let's see what other writers make of mind-boggling adventures like World Enough and Time and Silence in the Library, looking at stories like Love and Monsters and Nightmare in Silver that aren't looked upon so favourably by fans, why not see how they turn out in novelised form? There's so much potential, with over 100 stories to choose from and a huge audience eager to read more. Let's hope that this is only just the beginning. Look at the ears.